Right now at noon, how ceremonies around the country are honoring those who lost their lives 18 years ago today in the World Trade Center attacks. And day three in the Father William Nolan trial, what the accuser's brother is saying about the alleged assaults. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now at Noon. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mark Kane. Thanks for tuning in to News 3 Now on this Wednesday afternoon. Let's head over to the Weather Center. Meteorologist Dana Fulton has a look at your first alert forecast. Another muggy day out there. Oh, so muggy outside, a little warm, and we have had a few thunderstorms already sliding through. Most of them, though, uh, in central Wisconsin around the Dells and Camp Douglas, seeing storms in the last few hours. Here's our Doppler track over the last three hours. You can see quite a bit of lightning stretching up to the north. Now we do have the a few light showers building into Grant County, but more rain will be coming on through. Rainfall total in the last 24 hours. So what we've seen come through overnight and early this morning so far again favored up towards Black River Falls. Some areas picking up over an inch of rain, but around Dane County we've only had a few light sprinkles this morning. Uh, we're going to continue to keep an eye on the radar though as there are going to be more chances for very strong thunderstorms developing later this evening. It is 81 currently in Madison and 84 in Janesville with those dew points in the 70s. So it feels uh, thick outside right now. We have storms tomorrow or this afternoon and tomorrow and then finally cooling down by the end of the week. We'll look at your full forecast though in just a few minutes, Mark. L looking forward to the cool down. Yes, we'll see definitely. you in a few minutes, Dana. Thank you. <laughs> Never forget, those are the words heard around the nation today as people honor those lost in the 9-11 attacks. Nearly 3,000 people died on this day 18 years ago. At ground zero in New York City, bells mark when the planes hit the Twin Towers and when the towers fell. There's also a new memorial glade this year. It features stacks on, of granite in tribute to the first responders. Pray for all those first responders who have or will become ill as a result of their dedication and sacrifice. President Trump attended a ceremony in Washington, D.C. to remember those killed at the Pentagon. And near Shanksville, Pennsylvania, Vice President Mike Pence paid tribute to the passengers aboard United Flight 93. An emotional press conference at the state capitol today, Senator Dewey Strobel and Representative Timothy Ranthan announced legislation honoring 9-11 victims and designing, designating that is, a portion of State Highway 28 as the Wisconsin 9-11 Memorial Highway. Kewaskam High School graduate Andrea Lynn Haberman was among the victims killed in the towers. Her family was also there today, along with others impacted by the attacks. Today is a very tough day for our family, as you can tell. Time does not diminish the sadness. And I'm gonna close by saying to Andrea. Haberman's family have worked to, to build the Wisconsin Memorial, the 9-11 Memorial in Kewaskam. The memorial broke ground in June and will raise the beam by the end of fall. The Red Cross held their eighth annual Never Forget Blood Drive today. Dozens of Red Cross staff and volunteers filled the Madison Fire Department's Station 14 to take donations. They're experiencing a shortage right now, especially of O negative blood. Officials say the event is a great way to give back and honor those impacted by 9-11. What a simple, easy way today to give back to the community and honor those first responders than by giving blood. You still have time to donate. The event runs until 1 o'clock today. A 9-11 remembrance ceremony was also held at Station 14 earlier in the day. The Madison Police Department and Madison Fire Department's Honor Guards hosted the event at 8 o'clock this morning. Police Chief Mike Koval and Fire Chief Steve Davis gave remarks and then led a moment of silence. In other news this day, authorities have identified the woman killed Monday afternoon in a crash involving a dump truck in Rock County. 29-year-old Rochelle Dement of Beloit was pronounced dead at the scene of the crash. Deputies say Dement was driving a car on North Coon Island Road in the town of Magnolia and failed to stop at a stop sign at County Highway B hitting the dump truck. Deputies say a five-year-old child was also critically injured in the crash. A two-month-old girl who was also in the car was not hurt. The driver of the dump truck was not hurt as well. 
The accuser's brother took the stand in day three for the trial of Father William Nolan. Nolan is charged with six counts of second-degree sexual assault of a child. He's accused of assaulting a teenager more than 100 times. At the time of the alleged incidents, the accuser said he was an altar boy at St. Joseph's Church in Fort Atkinson, and Nolan was the priest. The accuser's brother says his brother told him about the assaults in 2006 and 2000, 2016 and 17, that is. Did he tell you the time frame where this took place? Um, middle school. Middle school. And when you said he told you how often it took place, did he, did he give you a number? Yeah, he gave it to me around 200 times. He actually reported to you, as you told the jury on direct examination, that it happened about 200 times, right? Yes. But you actually reported to the police that reported to you it happened between 79 and 200 times? That sounds right. We will have more on Father William Nolan's trial in our later newscast and all day long on Channel3000.com. New England Patriots head coach Bill Belichick says he is preparing to have Antonio Brown practice today despite the fact that Brown has been accused of a rape. A federal lawsuit filed yesterday alleges the 31-year-old assaulted his former trainer in three separate incidents. Brown's attorney says his client denies each and every allegation and will be pursuing all legal remedies to clear his name. Brown was recently released by the Oakland Raiders after clashing with the team throughout training camp. And some bad news for Brewers fans. Reigning NL MVP Christian Yelich is out for the rest of the season after breaking his kneecap on a foul ball during yesterday's game. Yelich is headed back to Milwaukee today to undergo further testing. He was a candidate for NL MVP again this year after being a member of the 40-30 club, which includes hitting more than 40 home runs along with 30 stolen bases. On a positive note, the Brewers are now one game behind the Cubs in the wild card race. And officials from Sauk County are asking individuals to prepare now before potential flash flooding over the next few days. Sauk County officials are expecting heavy rainfall, which could cause flash flooding. If an individual has no flooding, had, has had no flood, flooding previously, that is, officials say now's the time to prepare. There are free sand and sandbags available at the West Baraboo Garage. That's at 614 Highway 136 in Baraboo, across from Festival Foods. And there's more to come on News 3 Now at Noon. Up next, we'll see what Howard's working on in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. Today's casserole is one you either love or you might not be a big fan of. But with our creamy twist, we might just win you over.
when it comes to tuna noodle casserole, you either love it or you don't. Since I grew up on it, I think of it as a comfort food, right alongside meatloaf, pot roast, and spaghetti. When it first became popular in the 1950s, it was known as the dish that anyone with a can opener could make. Today, however, there are many variations that turn this basic casserole into something really special, like the easy one we're making today. We start by cooking some egg noodles according to the package instructions and draining them really well. Meanwhile, we combine some mushroom soup with some milk. Once that's mixed, we add some canned tuna, frozen peas, and a little salt and pepper. Then we add our noodles and give it a good stir. For extra richness, we add in some Swiss cheese and melted butter. Just before we pop it in the oven, we top it with some crispy, crunchy fried onions. Once it's bubbling hot, get ready to experience lots of comforting goodness. If you're still on the fence about whether you should make this or not, I say you give it a try. This version may just win you over. To get the recipe for our good old tuna noodle casserole, check out our website. I'm Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a cozy retro way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. Thank you, Howard. There's more to come on News 3 Now at Noon. Up next, meteorologist Dana Fulton is tracking some scattered showers, potential thunderstorms. That's ahead in your first alert forecast. Our call for action phone bank is open right now, ready to take on your consumer issues. You can call our hotline. Volunteers will help you with any consumer complaints. The number is 608-270-2833. The service is open every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday between 11 and 1. An unexpected bid between overseas stock exchange rivals and going from day job to dream job isn't just hashtag goals anymore. Diane King Hall has more in today's Money Watch report. The East wants a piece of the West. Hong Kong has made a surprise bid for the London Stock Exchange. Its offer, 
$37 billion. The LSE called the offer unsolicited and highly conditional. The board of the exchange also said it will consider the proposal and, quote, make a further announcement in due course. The number of uninsured Americans is on the rise. An annual report from the U.S. Census Bureau shows 27.5 million people living without health insurance in 2019. That's up from 25.6 million the previous year. The shift marks a reversal in a 10-year trend. Lyft is adding new safety features for riders and drivers. Beginning today, people can access 911 via the app. The new features come in the wake of a lawsuit filed by 14 women alleging sexual assault or rape by Lyft drivers. Other smart features include safety measures from Lyft to check in with riders and an option to get emergency assistance. An outdoor clothing brand, Prana, has launched a dream job promotion for people who want to find their calling. Applicants must submit a short video detailing their passion to dreamjob.prana.com. The winner will get $100,000 to pursue their dreams and will have to quit their day job. The contest runs through September 16th. And that's your CBS Money Watch report. For more, head to cbsmoneywatch.com. At the New York Stock Exchange, I'm Diane King-Hall. Thank you, Diane. Let's check Wall Street at the noon hour. The Dow Industrials up 95 points over the 27,000 mark again. The Nasdaq up 71. The S&P 500 gaining 13. Q106 Farm Director Pam Yonke is out of the radio barn today. So here are your farm numbers. And now for the weather, Dana's watching the radar over in the Weather Center. I am. Now, right now, things are pretty quiet, but we'll be keeping a very close eye on that radar this evening and again for Thursday afternoon and evening. Right now, it's cloudy outside at 81 in Madison, quite a bit above average, and our dew points are in the low 70s, so it feels very humid. Thankfully, a little bit of a calm breeze. Although maybe a little more of a breeze would be a, a nice outside with that humidity factored in. Light showers currently towards Camp Douglas and also around Pla Platteville. Uh, most of the heavier rainfall this morning coming through for central Wisconsin, but we are expecting some stronger thunderstorms later this evening, especially along the state line. And then the main bulk of the, the heavy rain and the severe weather threat uh, coming through for tomorrow. This is all as a stationary front is just draped across the state, dragging through Minnesota and down towards Nebraska. We're going to have that moisture continuing to travel along until finally this trailing cold front passes over late tomorrow evening. That's what's going to bring the strong th storm threat late in the day, but it's also going to bring a really comfortable cool down for Friday and Saturday. We'll get to enjoy partly sunny skies and a drop in our humidity. That's a nice thing for the end of the week. Slight risk for severe weather for the southeast corner of the state with those storms popping up today. We may see a few bring very, very heavy rain at times and some stronger wind gusts. And of course, that heavy rainfall could lead to some isolated flooding concerns. The rest of the area under a marginal risk for Thursday, a marginal risk for most of western Wisconsin. The slight risk stretching into Grant County and also into parts of Iowa. Uh, that's going to be as that front slides through really during the heat of the day. Thankfully, nothing for Friday because we get the sunshine back. Uh, chance for storms, as you can see, really sliding on into that southeast corner this evening. Mostly cloudy skies otherwise through the rest of the day and overnight and for tomorrow. Slight chance for a few showers early in the day on Thursday, but that mainly 
line of storms forms and slides through later in the evening after the heat of the day in Madison. That's the good news, but it is going to impact your evening and overnight. Look at that clearing sky by Friday. You may see a wraparound shower early in the day, but the afternoon and evening will be quite pleasant outside. Uh, continuing to keep an eye on the radar this evening. Of course, uh, if you do have any outdoor plans, Maybe a good idea just to have the weather app on your hand in case anything's issued in your area. Showers overnight will hug the state line. Tomorrow morning, your commute may be a little wet for some folks, uh, though we'll stay dry through most of the afternoon. It's not until that line forms and slides through later in the evening. Heading into Friday, again, we, we clear up and cool down. Temperatures will climb up into the 80s, and then we cool on down overnight. Overnight lows uh, will be landing for us in the mid 60s. So again, about a high for 80 today and tomorrow behind that cold front, though, cooler temps, lower humidity, a little more sunshine for Friday and Saturday. Then we warm right back up again. Looking ahead to the start of next week, it does seem like our temperatures will climb back to the mid 80s. Uh, there's going to be a really big warming trend actually throughout the northern Midwest. A little last blast of summer. Maybe we might maybe. get another one. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then we're back down to the mid 70s by the end of next week. But this evening, uh, again, I really would recommend having the weather app in your hand because uh, I know folks hate when they get alerts for other counties, and this is going to give you an alert for your area. When it's this humid out, something's got to give. Uh, yes. Yes, uh, the sky right now is 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 a little unstable. It's kind of ready to pop. <laughs> All right, we'll keep an eye on things. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dana. Ahead on News 3 Now at Noon, how a program is helping kindergartners in Boston prepare for college. That's after a short break. Well, Monday was the first day of school for kindergartners in Boston Public Schools, and each one got a special gift, $50 in their very own savings account. The money is meant to get families started saving for college. Lisa Hughes reports. 
At the Roosevelt School in Hyde Park, kindergarten kicked off with excitement First day of school. and nervousness. It's probably harder for me than it is for my son, but it, a lot of tears all around. These budding scholars don't know it, but they're getting some money today. Every child, so over uh, 4,000 kindergartens today, uh, get $50 seed money. Gosha Tomaszewska manages Boston Saves. It started as a pilot project three years ago in 11 schools. Today, it's in all Boston public kindergartens. It kind of makes you feel like you're doing the right thing. As Myrna Soto's son, Ezekiel, was in the pilot program, she works for the school system helps parents start having those conversations early about, you know, planning for college. Each student is automatically enrolled in Boston Saves. They can't touch the $50 until after high school and only for college or other job training. Parents can also earn incentive payments. They get incentive for linking their account. Uh, they get incentives for saving regularly. The seed money, which is held at a credit union, won't grow for the child. Instead, any interest goes back into the program. And of course, $50 won't even buy most college textbooks. But the goal is something bigger. We are giving people a tool and money, but really what we're trying to do is really start parents and kids thinking about the future early on. What is a better way to invest in the future of Boston and Boston's families than investing in our kids? And the cost of Boston Saves is about $200,000 for the city each year. Contributions also come from the private sector and nonprofits. The state is piloting a similar program that goes statewide next year. What a good idea. Dana, one final check of the forecast. Right now it's quite cloudy outside. Thankfully only a few light showers currently, but we are keeping a close eye on the radar this evening as some stronger thunderstorms might be popping up. Here's a live look from our WISC TV sky cam. As you can see, unfortunately, no sunshine coming on through. It feels quite muggy outside right now and uh, just a little warm. As far as our radar is concerned, again, the light showers really staying in the southwest corner of the state currently in Grant County, crossing into parts of Iowa County, the heavier rainfall around Camp Douglas. Uh, it doesn't look like it has lightning with it right now, so it is just rain and no thunderstorms currently. Though that may be likely later this evening. It's 84 right now in Janesville, a very warm and humid afternoon as our dew points are in the 70s. Uh, looking ahead through the rest of the week, plan on storm chances today and tomorrow, and then cooler by Friday. All right, keep an eye on things. That's our time for now. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you back here at 4 o'clock. In the meantime, have a great afternoon.